Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Studying with Brother Don. I'm Brother Don, and it's good to be here with you tonight and to share in God's Word. And uh, I just um, I hope you're having a good day, and everything is... I just hope you're having a blessed day. Amen? A blessed day. So tonight I want to talk about something that you hear preachers say all the time, and I want to show you why we say that, and then I want to show you two places in scripture where it happens and you'll see the difference in the two and why we say it so much and why we stress it so much today in our preaching and in our teaching father help us tonight as we study your word father just quicken our hearts to hear open our spirits father that we might receive your word and lord if we are not saved that that tonight we might call upon you as Lord and Savior. And Father, if we're backslidden, if we need to repent, Lord, that tonight by the drawing of your Holy Spirit that we would be submissive and obedient and do so. Help us tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles tonight, open first of all to uh, Philippians chapter 2. And... Uh, we begin reading in verse 5, and this will be a very, very well-known passage of Scripture. And when we get to the end of it, 9 verses 10 and 11, you'll grasp what I'm wanting to talk about tonight. And when I do, it's every knee will bow. And that, that's what the Scripture tells us. Every knee will bow to Jesus Christ at some point. And we'll see that. So Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5, and the scripture says this, and I'll be reading from the Christian standard. He says, Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant and taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father." So that's our text for tonight, or, or, or our beginning text. And, and the main point, the thing that he's getting at is because of what Jesus has done. He humbled himself. He laid aside his glory, and he came to earth in the form of a man, and he came for the purpose of dying on the cross for the sins of the world. And that's what he did. And because of that, verse 9, for this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him a name that is above every name. And then here it is, verse 10, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every knee. Nobody, nobody will be exempted from acknowledging that Jesus Christ is Lord and bowing to him. Verse 11, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Romans 10 verse 9 tells us that if we confess Jesus as Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And this is what Paul is trying to impress upon his readers here is that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the only one that paid the price for our sins. And without our coming to him and humbling ourselves and submitting ourselves to him, there is no salvation for there is no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. There is only one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Now, here's the thing. Again, Every knee will bow to Jesus Christ. And you hear preachers say that all the time. And we warn people and we admonish people, bow to Jesus now. Bow down and confess him as Lord and, and call upon him to be your Savior. Because if you don't do it now, humbly, submissively, you will do it later, whether you want to or not. 
And that's what I want to show you in Scripture tonight. There are two places I want to look at in both of these instances. The first one will be in Matthew chapter 24. Both of these instances happen at the second coming of Christ. And when Christ comes back, he comes back to judge the earth. He comes back to to fight Israel's battles. We, we've studied all that and seen all that. And when he comes back, here's what's going to happen. Matthew chapter 24. And let's begin reading in verse 29. He says, immediately after the distress of those days, and we've Matthew chapter 24, so we're talking about the tribulation, the end time, okay? So immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not shed its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Verse 30, then the sun will, of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 31, he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. So verse 30, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. And that's the second coming. That's as he's coming back with the clouds of glory and his mighty angels of fire. And we as the church, born again children of God, we will be coming back with him, the Bible tells us. And we looked at that under another study. But notice what it says. The sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So everybody, everyone on earth is going to see Jesus Christ when he comes back, okay? I don't know how, okay? I, God has not given us how he does that in Scripture. I don't know, but I know it's going to happen. And when Jesus Christ comes, everyone on earth will see him. And these people here in Matthew chapter 24, it says that they will mourn when they see him. And they will mourn. And, and that word mourn, it means to, to oh, beat your chest. It means to, to have that angst, you know, just it, it just grabs you. And, and because of what has happened, you just, it's just awe. It, you're, you're in awe of what's happening. And they mourn, it says. And at this time, as we will see later on, they will acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, okay? So that's the first one, Matthew chapter 24. And now, if you would, turn to Zechariah chapter 12. And this event that we're going to read now is also at the second coming of Christ. Zechariah chapter 12 And let's begin reading in verse 9. And we'll just read verse 9 and 10. And verse 9 sets the stage. On that day, the Lord says, I will set out to destroy all the nations that come against Israel. So again, that puts this at the second coming, at the end of the tribulation period. And then he says this in verse 10. He says, Then I will pour out a spirit of grace and prayer on the house of David and the residents of Jerusalem, and they will look at me, whom they pierced. They will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly for him as one weeps for a firstborn. So here again, the second coming of Christ. And, and you can read on over in chapter 14 and see that when he comes back on the second coming, it talks about that he's going to be physically back on earth. His feet in verse 4 are going to stand on the Mount of Olives. And again, everybody's going to see him. And here in chapter 12, verse 10, Israel, the Jews, the remaining Jews that are still alive at the end of the tribulation will see him. And it says he will pour out a spirit of grace and prayer on them, on the house of David and on the residents of Jerusalem. And they will look at him whom they pierced and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child. So again, we see them mourning for Jesus Christ. Again, they're in awe, but notice the difference in these two. 
Okay, in Matthew chapter 24, those people are not mourning for him as an only son. They're not looking at Jesus and saying, look, this is the one we pierced. This is the one who died for our sins. Obviously, they're going to see the, the the nail prints in his hand, the maybe the piercing in his side, the scars on his forehead from the crown of thorns. And he says of these in chapter 12 of Zechariah, he's going to pour out his spirit on them and they're going to mourn, but they're going to mourn because they realize now that he truly was their Messiah. He truly was the Savior, and they are going to repent and receive him as Lord and Savior and Messiah. In Matthew chapter 24, they there will mourn because now they realize, yes, he was the Savior, but we rejected him, and now it's too late. Now there's, there's no repentance. There's no turning back now. You see the difference? So it's kind of like when I was thinking about this this afternoon, I just I remembered a, a, a little thing. People, a lot of time people are sad that they did something, but they're only sad that they did it because they got caught. You've been there before? I know you have. I, I've been there before. You're sad you did it because you got caught. As long as you don't get caught, you're fine with it. Okay, well, in chapter 24 of Matthew, they're mourning because they got caught. Truly, he was the Messiah. Truly, he died for their sins, and he offered salvation and grace to them, but they rejected it. And now they're mourning. Now they're weeping and wailing because there is no hope anymore. But here in Zechariah chapter 12, the same instance, the same day, the same time, these people are mourning because they see him and they recognize that he truly is their Savior and God's Spirit comes upon them and they receive him as Lord and Master. So in both cases, people bowed before Jesus. In both cases, people recognized and I believe because of Scripture and other places, they will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But both cases do not lead to salvation. That's why preachers preach so hard and tell people so much and so often, repent now. Call upon Jesus now. Don't wait because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know that you're going to have the opportunity tomorrow. These people in Matthew chapter 24, and when you read the book of Revelation, sometime when you read the book of Revelation, keep you a, 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 a pen and, and a paper or a notepad or something, and as you go through there, mark every time that it mentions God's grace, God's offer of salvation, and every time that it says, and they refused to repent. They refused to acknowledge God. You see, everybody thinks, man, I've got time. I, I'll do this later. And some people who know just enough about the Bible to get themselves in trouble are thinking, okay, I'm going to wait till I see all of this. Or some even think, okay, I'll wait. If, if, if I see the rapture or if I see the Antichrist, then I'll accept Jesus Christ. Well, folks, It'll be too late because the Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians that those who knew the truth, and if that's your attitude, you know enough of the truth to know, says God's going to send you a strong delusion and you'll believe the lie because you had your chance to kneel before Jesus Christ and call upon him as your Lord and Savior. All of these people we're at the same place as, as in the second coming of Christ, the last days of the tribulation. They all saw the same event, but they had two different responses to it. And I want to tell you today, as the Holy Spirit moves upon your heart and upon your life, and you know it, there's no doubt when he does as the Holy Spirit moves upon you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, 
do it right then. Humbly bow before Jesus Christ and confess him as Lord and Savior because if you don't, you may not have another chance and you may find yourself rather than in Zechariah chapter 12 in Matthew chapter 24 and you won't have that opportunity. You will bow before Jesus and you will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God, but it won't be with a repentant heart. The message of salvation is the greatest message we have to preach today, that Jesus Christ loved us so much that he was willing to go to the cross and die, suffer like he did, torture, die for our sins, go to the grave for three days and then rise again the third day so that we could come to him and in faith, with a repentant heart, say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, save me, and he will. Remember what I said, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart, that's the repentant heart, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And if you'll do that now, Folks, you, according to the teaching of the Word of God, you won't have to worry about the tribulation. You won't have to worry about Zechariah 12 or Matthew 24. You'll be in heaven, and when Jesus comes back, you'll come back with him. Please accept Jesus Christ now. Christian, the same message to you. If, even though you're saved, even though you're born again, if right now, the Holy Spirit is dealing with you about something in your life. Maybe there's a sin in your life. Maybe there's something that you're not doing that you know that's what God wants you to do. Do it now while the Holy Spirit is, is working in your heart because now you have the faith. Now you have the opportunity. And if you harden your heart, you may not have that opportunity later. Remember what he said in Philippians chapter 2. He said, let this same attitude, this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. He humbled himself. Let us bow before Jesus Christ today. Amen. God bless you and thank you. And again, I hope you have a blessed and a wonderful day. And uh, share these videos with your, your friends and your family and, and uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, just go to go to YouTube and up in the search box, just type in Don Chumley and it'll bring up it, it'll bring it up and you'll be able to find me and find my pages. You can go to my YouTube page. And if you'll click on playlist, it, it'll it bring you to a page where I've got all of the messages in different uh, categories, uh, studying with Brother Don, a prof, uh, uh, prophetic studies, and then various series that I've teached or t that I've taught through different books. You can find those and uh, you can probably find just about anything you're looking for because there's quite a few in there, quite a few studies. And again, share and like. I love you. I thank you for your support. God bless you.